Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract, and we're going to take you through the docs right here, zimjs.com, and then we hit docs for animate, animate, like that. Animate is one of the more important methods in Zim. Uh, we can do lots with animate, so have a seat. You may not be able to watch this all at once, but if you do, you should know um, well, come out of it in the end with a better understanding of all of the things that animate can do. First of all, it is the method animate here. Uh, we put that on any display object, as opposed to animate Adobe animate. So if you do a search on YouTube for Zim animate, ZimJS animate, you'll probably find half of them are about using Zim with Adobe animate. And then the other half are about uh, the animate method here. So they're completely different things. We do, we do um, provide Zim Shim for Adobe Animate. Uh, Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS. And Zim is based on CreateJS, so that means uh, we can code right in Adobe Animate and export to Zim files, or whatever <laughs> you want to call them. However, this is all about the animate method. So here's the animate method with the various parameters. So as you can see, there's a lot of parameters there. If we scroll on down here, animate is to animate properties and time. And there's all sorts of things we can do. Um, we can loop and rewind and have delays and uh, sequences and series. Um, this link right here is a good visual place to start, so I'm going to click that to introduce some of the basic things. Uh, the one that is selected here is dark, and it's showing absolute animation, and the code for that matches down in here like so. So if I click the next one, then it shows relative animation with quotes. Quote 360 makes it relative, whereas this one doesn't have quotes, and that makes it an absolute position. We'll talk more about this later. And then there's series, and so that's the code for animation series. Here's animating from something, and uh, then adding a weight. So there's a little weight, and this one is animating in a sequence. So if you press on any of those, you can see how those are made. However, what I would like to do is do this ourselves. So I'm going to reduce this down, put that over here, and we've got some code, and we're going to go through that basic animation steps uh, right here with this rectangle. So a rectangle, if you recall, has a dot outline, this thing called a registration point. And so I save that and refresh. Oh, darn. It's a red rectangle, a red registration point. And stuff. Anyway, registration point is in the top left corner. So when we animate certain things like the scale, it will animate from that registration point, and the rectangle will get bigger this way. It will also animate rotation around that point. That may not be desired, so we'll, we'll try it out and see what it looks like, but then we'll probably center ridge. So anyway, that's just a reminder there. Let's try dot animate. Then we can chain animate on, and we could say chain the scale, or sorry, no chain, but uh, animate the scale to twice as big. So the first parameter of animate is what properties to animate, and those are placed inside of an object literal so that we could say as many properties as we want, but there we go. There's our rectangle getting bigger again from the top left corner. So if we bo both do scale and rotation, rotation colon 45, now it will animate uh, its rotation about that corner as well. So probably better to center reg. I'll just drop this down so we can see it better. Center reg will put the registration point in the center of the box and now we can see that it, it animates and scales from its center. Indeed, let's, um, or it rotates and scales from the center. Let's just do the scale. So there's the scale happening. Okay. Uh, other things we can do, the next parameter is how long to do that for. So if we wanted it to be faster, we could say 0.5 seconds. The default's a, it default is one second. So now it animates faster. Faster yet, 0.2 seconds. Pew! Slower, just two seconds. And now it animates more slowly. 
So time is the next parameter. The next one after that is the easing. This is what, um, what type of easing it has. An easing is an equation that it uses uh, for its motion. This is what linear would look like. Linear easing, it would just sort of slowly get bigger, you know, in uh, all kind of in a linear manner. Whereas if we say bounce, well, we'll go back out like this, watch what happens. It gets bigger and then it comes back. So let's reduce that to one second. It gets bigger and then comes back. Bigger, comes back. How about a back in out? So now it will go back at the start. It'll get smaller, then get bigger, and then get smaller. We refresh. You see that? It acts almost like it's alive. Isn't that cool? So that's the easing. The parameter after that is what function to call once it's done. So we can make an arrow function there, like that. And then we can make this object disappear or remove this object when it's done. So this is the callback. So that would look like, uh, well, we don't know what this rectangle is called. See, we haven't assigned it to a variable. But we could assign it to a variable and then use that variable here. Or the parameter in here is the target. So when Zim animate calls this function at the end, it passes to the function what it's animating, the target. And we're in ES6, so we don't need these round brackets if we don't want them in our arrow function. So then we can say target dot remove from like this. It will handle the stage dot update for us. We don't need it in the animate. Bop, and it's gone. See that? Bop, and it's gone. So uh, those are the first four parameters, and then it carries on. There's many more parameters. So if I know that I want to loop something or rewind something, usually I go to the Zim Duo technique. So let's have a look at that. If we drop each of these things down like this onto the next line, boom, boom, boom. these are all of the values. I hmm, guess we don't want quite both of those to go. So this one right here is the end of the animate right there. So this is a value, that's a value, that's a value, this is a value. And then what we do is we put squiggly brackets here and end the squiggly brackets there. So now we're inside of an object literal and this one is called the props. This one is called the time. This one is called the ease. This one is called the call. Tell you what, we're, we're not going to want to do a call because we're going to rewind and loop. If we loop, the call will never run. So I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so another way, this is the Zim Duo technique where we can say what the parameters are based on um, the, the parameter name. So we make an, uh, an object literal with property name, property name, property name, value. The property names match the parameter names. So that will still work. Ba-doomp. Okay, so let's get rid of the ease too, and we'll just say, uh, uh, well, we'll say rewind first. Let's see what the rewind does. Rewind true, like that. Now I can just go directly to rewind, and that makes it pretty easy, doesn't it? And so there it gets bigger and gets smaller. See that? So it just rewound. Bigger and smaller. Um, now we can go comma loop colon true. Like that, and now I'll keep on doing that forever. Bigger, smaller. Bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. You get the idea? Isn't that nice? Let's have a look. We're dotting the animate. If we want to jump right to rewind and loop without worrying about the parameter order, we go to the object literal. The props are whatever props we want in there. The time is whatever that's default. So we could get rid of that if we wanted to. And we're left with rewind and looping. We can also animate the color. Color, colon, blue, uh, purple. We go and we refresh here and it gets purple and back to red purple red purple red we can pause in there too so we could rewind pause colon hmm, one second so there it starts to oh <laughs> it didn't work <laughs> i guess i must be wrong <laughs> not rewind pause. rewind wait my apologies rewind wait <laughs> Doop, doop. Please edit that. We rewind, and there we are waiting, and then we go back. Rewind, wait, and then we go back. You can also loop wait. 
You can call a function once you've waited. You can call a function before you've waited. We can go again, blah, blah, blah. So any any time we loop, for instance, we could call a function when we're looping, and it will call it every time we loop. So that's called a loop call. And of course, you would look for parameters to be able to figure that out. So that's the basic animation. Let's try a few other things. How about we'll comment this one out, comment, and we'll make this one dot animate. Let's animate the X position. Uh, one sec, let's refresh that so we can think here. Um, animate and but we're going to do a series. So if we animate a series, we can put that in an array here. So if we have an array, then we can say the props will be x to um, 300. Well, let's go to 300 like so. That means just 300 over to the right. And we could do that in a time of one second or whatever it may be. The next thing then is going to be another squiggly and these this time we'll do the props and we'll do the Y going down um, 100 like so and we can do that in hmm, 0.5 seconds. Okay, so uh, this is one animation object. This is another animation object and it will do these ones one after another. Here we go. Oh, if we didn't make a mistake. So we've got an array, props colon x300, but I don't see a mistake. Do you see a mistake? No. What does it tell us? Un unexpected token squiggly brackets on 23. There's definitely a mistake somewhere. Hmm, why is that unexpected? Oh, uh, time values. Time colon, there we go. So props is this, time is that. Okay, refresh. There it goes over and down. So once again, over and down. That is called a series and you could keep on doing that. You can also set the time to negative so it will start doing the next animation before the other one finishes, um, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that's an animation series. Now let me show you uh, how we can animate from a certain place. So right now we've got um, a red box there. What if we wanted to animate from up here? Well, we could start the box up here by giving it its y a negative value. Oh, by the way, I just realized you get the relativeness. So let's just do, let's bring that back. My apologies. Um, that was a relative position. If we do an absolute position, this is going to animate to an x of 300, which is actually, remember it's center red, so that must be 300 over is right here. So that's animating to 300 versus quotes animates 300 from where it is. So now if we save that, it animates 300 over and down. If we want to just animate 100 over and down, it would be like that, which is obviously a lot different than with the quotes off. Now that's going to go to position 100, 100, 100, 100. And because this is 200 wide with the registration in the middle, it goes to the corner. Yeah. Okay. If you wanted both the X and Y to go together, then you would not do a series. You would just put the X and Y in here like we did the color and the scale. Okay. All right. So commenting that out, let's uh, go to what... Oops, I the period... Let's go to what we were on to, and that was animating from up here. So we could start the, the box up here by setting center regging and then either moving it way up there or, or locating it up there or positioning it. But a neat way to do it is saying, well, hey, that's where we want it to be. So let's switch the animation. So instead of going dot animate and with these squiggly brackets, instead of saying props, squiggly brackets, um, going to this location. So that would be something like a Y2 stage height divided by two. You see, we have to do some calculations to figure out where we want to go to. We would have to start this up somewhere else above, like I could say move uh, center reg it and then move it zero in the X and I don't know, minus 500 in the Y or something. And maybe this would work. Let's try it. Yeah, that roughly works. So we moved it way up here and then we animated it down. But you see I had to do some calculations there. 
So instead of that, we can go into here and say from colon true. And here, uh, instead of this, we would say this is now minus 100 or minus 200 or whatever we want. So what we're doing is we're animating from a y of minus 100, and it's going to end up animating to where, where it is right now. And so we refresh, <laughs> comma, we refresh. If I got the bugsies today, look at that. There we go. Whoop. Okay. Uh, I think we should add a bounce to that. So comma um, ease colon bounce out. So out is at the end of the animation, whereas bounce in would be at the beginning. Boink. Look at that. Boink. What if we don't want it to, to do that right away? Well, we could say wait colon one second comma. So now we're going to wait one second and then it falls and bounces. Nice. You might want to just wait 0.5 seconds. Give people a sense that they're here and then something falls. <laughs> All right, but don't, wait, don't make them wait too long. Um, so what if you're continuing to make your app and you have a bunch of animations at the beginning and it's really annoying because every time you go to test your app, this thing has to bounce and then something else happens and, and you know, you just want to get on with whatever you're testing. Well, if you want, you can say animate colon false up here. Oh, not colon, equals false. So this is the animate constant. And if we set it to false, there, we're, we're already here. So what it did, it didn't bother doing this animation. And since we sent a regged already, it just starts where it is. So that's another advantage of using from. If you use from in your animations, you can set this to false and all of your stuff will be in the right place. And it no longer animates from anywhere because it's like it just puts it in the right place and doesn't do the animations. Isn't that cool? So um, that's uh, an advantage of using the from. Okay, let's try something different. Let's try a sequence. So we've already seen a series. Um, well, for a sequence, we'll comment all of that stuff out. And we will make a new tile dot center, uh, we'll center regit, and we'll dot animate, dot animate the scale to two. So that will be uh, animating to a scale of two, like so, and in one second. So if we want to use a sequence, what we can do is this, we'll have to turn that into the Zim Duo technique, so this is props. And here we go. So we'll drop this down like so. Props. And we can say sequence, sequence, colon. And if we put 0.5, what this will do is if we animate with a sequence on a container that has a bunch of stuff, then it will animate the first one to a scale of two, wait 0.5 seconds, animate the next one to, well, I may as well show you. So there goes the first one, second one, third. Oh, well, you know, we can't quite see what's going on, can we? Why don't we go dot alp, yeah, 0.5 or something like that. And we can make that a little bit faster, 0.2. Nice, so that's a sequence. And you can loop that, loop colon true, and we'll rewind it as well. Oh, wow. Yay, Zim. So how would you pause that? How about this? We can say uh, time out. And we'll wait one second. And we'll call this arrow function. In that arrow function, we can say pause animate, like so. That will pause all animations. So there we go. Paused after a second. And we can put something in here, another timeout of one second, and pause animate false. So this one, by default, is true to pause it, and the next one is false. Let's see what happens. There it paused, and there it goes again. Neat, huh? So at any time, you can pause animate. You can also stop animate, and that stops it completely. But pause can be unpaused, which is handy. Um, let's see. So that's animating a sequence. Let's <laughs> put that on pause. Can't think what's next. Well, the sequence is hypnotizing me. 
<laughs> All right, so we've got nothing there. Uh, you can also pause certain IDs. So if you give an uh, uh, if you give an ID to something, then you can pause true and pass in the ID next. And then it will say if you have five animations going, you could give three of them the same ID and then pause that ID and those three animations would pause and the other ones would not pause. Uh, good. There's also something called, uh, well, there's, there's Wiggle as well. Maybe I'll show you Wiggle after. Why don't we go to the docs and take a look? There's probably some more things in there that we want to see. So I'm going to bring back the docs here. And let's have a look. All right, so advanced animations lets you animate along a path of uh, the squiggle and a blob. Let's go on down to see where we see that stuff. So it's all under props here. We can animate the scale, the color, a note of a synthesizer. We can animate shapes as well from a squiggle to a blob. I'll show you an example of that. But we can animate along a path, which is pretty amazing. And we've set that all up in ZimNeo, so there's all sorts of examples of doing that there. But why don't we go in and code that together, and then maybe we can come out and take a look at these examples afterwards. We can animate at a start percent that path and animate to a certain percent. We can orient along the path, flip it when it gets to the end, flip it vertically or not. Um, there's all sorts of neat things right here that will, as uh, these are animations based on other animations or other properties. So we're going to animate the zoom based on the Y is really neat. So as something gets higher, it might get slower or faster or something as the Y gets bigger, I guess, going down this way, we can make it go faster with speed or we can make it bigger. So it gets bigger down here and smaller up here. It makes it look three dimensional. We can even make it go through layers and fade it out as well. So we'll see some of that after in the example. OK, let's do that then. Uh, we um, will animate along a path now. So we make the path const squiggle, for instance. Let me get a switch. Sorry about that. Const squiggle is equal to a new squiggle like that. And we'll center that on the stage. We might want to, well, leave it as it is now. And then we will say um, new circle. Uh, about 50 comma red dot s add to uh, the when we add animate along a path it puts it on the path for us so we just need to add it to the stage dot animate oh sorry about my typing animate and we'll go to the squiggly brackets and say props what uh, the path is path is squiggle like that wow let's see if it works there it goes. It just animated the ball along that squiggle. Let's make it a little bit smaller so we can see what's going on. Um, how about we add a rewind to it? Rewind colon true. A uh, loop colon true. <laughs> loop colon try <laughs> and try again. <laughs> and the time, I will slow it down a little bit of three oh, with a comma. Also, we might want to start the squiggle. This is what I was going to add before. With um, Right now, we've got the controls. Well, I know we're going to want to do an on top colon false like that. Because otherwise, when we pick up the controls, so what I want to do is show you that we can actually move these like that. But if we didn't do the on top false, when we picked up the controls, the squiggle would come to above the circle. And I want the squiggle below. And look at that. We can make a loop the loop with the squiggle. Isn't that neat? So if we wanted to, we could have made this wiggle interactive false, and then you, you know, the person couldn't change the path. You can hide the squiggle so that you only see the animation. All right, great. Um, we can also drag along the squiggle by going down. It's not here in the props, but it's down in here. Drag, colon, true. And what that will do is it will pause it. So now it's paused, but we can pick that up and drag the the circle along the squiggle isn't that amazing you can change that location drag along there 
Um, if we want it to animate as well as drag, then we would say start paused. Uh, false. Because when we set drag, it automatically turns the, the animate to starting paused. But there we go. Now it's not paused. Right, pick that up and throw it back the other way. Isn't that amazing? Oops. There we go. Cool, huh? Um, so that's very powerful. And there's all sorts of examples of that happening. And that's in the Zim Neo. So why don't we pull those up? Zim Neo Extra. And there's Zim Neo on the path. Well, I suppose we could go into that one. Zim Neo on the path. So if I hit go, that's traveling around the path like that. I hit no, and we can edit the path or not. Then back in Zimneo, this is the Zimneo site. Um, we introduced this in Zim9, this stands for, and here's dragging along the path, so hey. Oh, uh, note that this is getting bigger. So as it comes forward, it gets bigger, and then when it goes to the back, it gets smaller, which sort of gives it this three-dimensional look. We get a lot of that here in Extra, so I'll press on Extra. It even changed layer. So there, as it gets closer, it comes through that layer, and now it's behind that layer, and it gets slower the farther back and darker and faded. And then when it's up close, it's faster. Isn't that amazing? And again, this is an editable path here, so I can edit the path and have it, uh, have it continue and change. Fantastic. So there's other things with uh, extra as well. We're control. We can control the speed here. So this is using my um, my mouse to. If I hold it in the middle here, that's really slow. And that's almost backwards. And that's forwards, backwards, forwards. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So that's using a motion controller and an accelerator to control the speed of animation. And there might be other ones in there too that you might want to. Oh, orientation is kind of cool. So if I hit go here, all those things are orienting towards my mouse. Look at that, all those little triangles. If I put them on the inside, they're all looking in the inside. I go this way, they're all looking that way. So you can orient along a path, but you can also orient to anything as you go. Very cool. All right, so those are the Zim Neo examples. Let's have another scan through here and make sure that we've got most of our stuff that we're wanting to look at. We had some information. Oh, shape animations. Okay, so I'll go to a shape animation now. Oh, I don't know if you noticed, but those were all paused. So animations will pause if I go to another screen and I come back. There they all go again. And you, that's called pause on blur, and you can change that so that it doesn't happen. But that's a setting that, that we like to do. That keeps them all in sync. Hmm... Pause, animate with IDs, stop, animate, that's good. Shape animation, that's what we were looking for. Okay, so back here, we'll go to the Zim site under examples. And down below, somewhere in here, there's a lot of animation examples in here, but there's one on shape tweens. So we're changing the shape of a heart blob to an hourglass blob or whatever that is. And down in here, this thing changes the blob as it's bouncing to different shapes. And then finally stops. Uh, here, watch this one. We move the squiggle, we hit reset, whoop, and it goes back to where it was. Isn't that amazing? Any part of the squiggle, where? Ready? Reset, whoop. And so that's a shape animation. We're animating the squiggle from this one to back to the original squiggle. Uh, very cool. Okay, anything else in here that we might want to look at? Boo, boo, boo. We want to see wiggle. I know that we want to look at wiggle. That was a sequence, animate, 3JS. Oh, there we are animating uh, an object. So this is just a normal object there. And we animate the object. So we didn't go object.animate because this normal object doesn't have an animate method. Instead, we use the animate function and pass the object in as the first parameter. Then the rest is the same as the animate method. So we can animate things. This is in 3JS. We can animate stuff based on it. We can also, there's dots in the, we're animating a dot property. So you can do that. And that means you can use Zim to, Zim animate to animate 3JS objects. You can also animate CSS properties. 
with Zim by just putting the tag in there and what you're wanting to animate. That's built in through CreateJS. As a matter of fact, create, this is built on CreateJS's tween.js, except tween.js, they, um, they make a new tween and they chain to the tween. We want to chain, when we make, we want to chain animate onto the circ, or, you know, onto the objects. So look, we're chaining this, we're chaining this. We want to chain animate as well. Um, we don't want to have a, a new tween and it would like take us out of, out of chaining. Also, um, even though we are based on CreateJS's tween.js, uh, we can do much more than that. The, the, the Zim animate is about 10 times more code than the CreateJS tween.js library. So we've added a lot to be able to be able to animate along paths and various things that we can do. So, um, uh, yep, <laughs> there you go. Animates one of the more complicated of the of the code uh, in here. So looking through extra stuff, animating on animations. Did, did we show you that? Well, roughly we talked about it: zoom, speed, layer, fade. But you can animate. On based on anything so you can put any you can animate based on animations it's uh, pretty amazing so with extra you can pretty well do anything you want we also have zim v values by the way and that means that some things in here if they have zim v like time that means uh, the next time it runs we can it can run with a different time there's also a rate parameter which i would suggest you probably use so you could animate a rate parameter for instance and that's down here do 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 somewhere down here there it is animate a rate uh, parameter so like half the speed that will so you put in the same time but this will run it at half the half the speed and the, uh, put in two will run it at twice the speed and you can use a you can use a slider to change that or something like that we have custom eases so let's have a look at that right custom eases we should take a look at there's the various things that we can do for animating and various methods to end tween and reset tween and replay tweens. You can also turn on an animation event, but you have to have the ev events parameter turned on. So up here, did I pass it? Up here is the events parameter, and then you'll receive an animation event every time it tries to animate, 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 animate. Um, so usually we turn that off because you don't often need it. Sometimes you do. Okay, so a couple things we wanted to look at. What were they? Oh no, now I can't remember. Protect, uh, what was it? Sequence, rewind, eases, weights, eases, times. Do you remember? Animation series, CSS. No, that wasn't it. Extra, did it have to do with extra? I don't think so. Flipping orientation, <laughs> darn, I can't remember now. <laughs> um, I know I wanted to, to look at uh, Wiggle, but uh, there was one other thing that I thought I'd look at too, but I can't remember it, unfortunately. So my apologies, froms and sequence, loops and times, got all that stuff. Uh, oopsies, oh well, that's what happens when there's just so much stuff to look at, huh? Let's go back to our code and try a wiggle. Okay, and maybe that other one will come to us. So we'll keep the circle there. We'll get rid of the squiggle. We'll uh, center the circle rather than all this other stuff here. Comment that out. And we're back to a circle that has been dot centered. Let's have a look. Great, there's a circle. Let's make it a bit bigger, 140. Here we go. And when we want to make something go back and forth, we could animate it so that it goes back and forth. I'm just gonna hit drag on that for a second so I can kind of demonstrate here. We could animate it so it goes back and forth, but uh, most likely it'll start here, go over to here, animate back to there again. And so in other words, it always goes back to this starting spot. It's not 
even if we did a big one, then a small one, then a big one, then a small one, it's it's now always going to this starting spot. So that's one problem with the rewind is you're kind of stuck because you start at a certain place and it rewinds to that same place. So we realized that and made Zim wiggle. And what wiggle does is it wiggles around a certain point randomly kind of on either side. Well, let's, let's show you what that looks like. So dot wiggle is a Zim animate in the background, but it, um, it, it animates from a certain point, goes to the left and right or right and left or up and down or whatever, it wiggles about that point. So for instance, if we want to wiggle the X property, we would want to wiggle that based on the stage width divided by two. That's where it's starting from. So that's the location of the beginning point of, of X. And then we want to say how much at a minimum. How about we do a minimum of 20 pixels and a maximum of 100 pixels. In how long? Well, how about 0.5 seconds to one second? So it looks like a lot of parameters, but it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? What property are we animating? What's its starting point? How much, or what's the minimum amount that will wiggle? What's the maximum amount that will wiggle? What's the minimum time that will wiggle? What's the maximum time that will wiggle? And then we get this. So there's a circle wiggling about that um, middle part. Okay, if we want it to wiggle faster, we could go 0 0.2 to 0 0.5, for instance, like that. And then it is there, it's wiggling. If we wanted it to wiggle equally, we would just say 0.2 to 0.2 or just leave out the second 0.2. And then it just goes back and forth on a wiggle. But I like a little bit of randomness in, in our wiggle. Okay, and again, if we wanted it to be always the same amount, we would put those two at the same amount. So that's the X, for instance. Here's the, the Y, we would do the same thing, except we'd say around the stage height probably. And then you would get it both sort of wiggling in the X and the Y. You can wiggle the, etc. You can wiggle the, ro well, not the rotation of the circle. How about the um, scale of the circle? Be careful with the scale a bit. So here's wiggling the scale. We'll start at maybe 1.5 or so, and we'll wiggle 0 0.5, about 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. You don't really have to wiggle too much with scale. And we can do it in the same amount of time or in a smaller time or who knows, 0.5, it doesn't really matter. And now it gets bigger and smaller and you can see that that is quite wiggly. Waha, wonderful. Um, what if we wanted to pause that uh, with a button or if we click on it? Um, well, we'll pause it with a button, new button. I can't imagine trying to click on it might be <laughs> kind of hard. Dot loc at 100 comma 100 dot tap call the arrow function and let's do um, well actually maybe that would work you can put an id in here but it's uh, we'd have to go to zim duo technique to get to the id otherwise it's a few more parameters over so yeah let's not bother we'll just go pause animate animate oh one thing you could do i come to think of it is just on, like we could have paused certain ones of these or we could have just said um, const ball is equal to and then we can say ball dot pause animate so this will pause all animation on the ball animate I can, I can do it there we go all right so we got this button and when we press the button bop it pauses and we could set that to toggle but we haven't at the moment and then there it is, wiggle, 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 pause. If you only wanted one of those things to pause, say the scale, then you could have given an ID to the scale and used the pause animate. It would look like this, true to pause, and then you would give the ID, whatever the ID is. And there. Okay, great. We showed wiggle. Um, we talked about animate. Oh, I remember I was going to show you eases. Yay. Can you believe it? <laughs> I thought, I thought that one was lost, but, uh, sure enough, if we find a browser over here, I was going to show you the custom eases. So not too long ago, it was in Zimcat. That means we could probably find it under the news and looking back at cat. There it is right there, actually. Um, this is the easing that we introduced in Zimcat, so custom easing. This, here's a linear ease. If we hit test, 
and that ball just sort of shoots over. There's different types of easing up here, so uh, let's try something that we can actually see the difference. Out in cortic, no, okay, how about a back? Yeah, there we go. So this one is the percent complete this way. So we're actually gonna go opposite to complete. So it'll go back the wrong way and then finish, let's test. Back and then forward, back and then forward. And if we want, we can adjust these things. That almost would look like a snap, I think. It almost gets there. Then it comes back from being there and it continues. Let's test. Nero, snap. You see that, Nero? Snap. <laughs> cool. So uh, once you get that, you can hit save and it gives you the equation to pass into the ease. All you do is take that and paste it into your, your animates ease parameter. Very cool, huh? So you, you're given some up here. These are all really out of the box. Like you can get those um, by just saying in quad or something. That would be quad in, in cube, whatever. Quint. Sorry. <laughs> There's a quint. What's the, what's the quad? Anyway, quad is quadratic, which is a, yeah, quad. Um, so these are custom eases. And there was another thing kind of showing you a bunch of eases. Well, it was under Zimcat. Let's have a look. It was this one right here. So there's slow-mo. So what, you, what you're seeing down here with these words coming in, come on words, you know, where it goes fast and then slow and then fast, that's called slow-mo. This one is called, when it gets up to the top, it's slow and it falls to the bottom. That one's called ballistic, I think. And then there is a snap on this little star, snap. And there's a snap coming out. It's like we take it out and then we throw it, snap. So those are three eases that we, uh, three extra eases that we gave you. Or was it four? Yeah, three extra eases that we gave you, but you can also make your own custom eases. Wow, so there's probably even more to do with various animations, but I think that gives us a pretty good look at them. And this isn't an explore, this is looking at the Zim docs for Indeed Animate. All right, and there's all sorts of things for you to look at. Uh, if you wanna watch this again, that might be a good idea. Okay, have a look at um, the different examples in here there throughout. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Of course, you can animate without even animate. You can just use a ticker and uh, set the properties or to say, hey, you know, ball.x plus equals one. And if you do that in a ticker, it will slow, you know, it will move across the stage. That's old school animation. Uh, the advantage of animate obviously is you know, all sorts of <laughs> all sorts of things. easing is is the best thing there all right take it easy bye bye all the best come visit us at zimjs.com/slack zimjs.com/discord cheers